Good morning, it's an honor to be here, but I'll just get right to my story. So that's me at nine years old. Here you see a little boy who thought the greatest thing the US had to offer was McDonald's and donuts. When I got here, I experienced more than the famous fast food chains and theme parks. Yellow school buses, well-paved highways, public parks, malls, and electronic gadgets I was so used to seeing in the movies. At the time, my dad sold our cars in a small town in central Brazil to bring our family to America for a summer so my brother and I could have a direct experience speaking English while we were still young. Just a reminder, summer in Brazil is winter in America. So here's a picture of my family struggling to deal with the Thor the winter. <laughs> Initially, the plan was for the trip to, was for us to study at a full English immersion program in Fort Lauderdale. But once we started, my dad realized it was too expensive and it wasn't really giving us the cultural immersion we were looking for. So a Brazilian family who were friends of friends and the only people we knew in America were kind enough to offer that we could stay with them. And we moved in. Even though the family was also Brazilian and the community we stayed in had strong Brazilian influences, it was a true immersion in American culture. I don't know exactly what my dad expected, but something definitely happened on that trip. And I went back to Brazil in love with America. From then on, I studied English and dreamed about a day where I could study in the US. I graduated from a formal English training program in Brazil and spent many hours watching movies and listening to music in English. Believe it or not, my most effective study techniques were to research words of very fast rap songs and try to sing along with the rapper or to watch popular TV shows at the time like Lost, Survivor, or American Idol. So seven years later, when I was 16, my parents decided to come back to South Florida for another trip. Once more, we immersed ourselves in the culture to try to improve our English skills. At the end of the trip, the family we stayed with the first time invited me to move in with them and go to high school here. I was a proud Brazilian and very close to my family but I was so drawn to America in its sense of opportunity. So I decided to take the risk and move to America, more specifically to this little room, while my family returned to Brazil. At that moment, I really embraced what would become one of the major intersections in my life, the intersection of two cultures. Since I was a child, I was always a good student, but like many Brazilians, I was also passionate about playing soccer. In Brazil, if you're serious about playing soccer, you have to pursue it with such an intensity that it often leads many to give up everything else. I didn't want to choose between athletics and academics. And fortunately, in the US, I didn't have to. So I continued to play soccer competitively throughout high school while also being at the top of my class academically. This picture highlights two of my favorite activities in high school, the soccer team and the quiz bowl team. I didn't realize it then, but choosing to be part of different communities would end up shaping not only the, my academic career, but also the person I was starting to become. Applying to college involved another fork in the road. I struggled which directions to take my academics. I had grown up around medicine. My dad was a doctor whose surgical practice eventually grew into him leading a full-size hospital. It seems immature to me looking back, but at the time, I felt like part of being my own man meant studying something different. I felt like I should build my own name in the field. And I had always been fascinated by economics and the economic choices people make, so I applied as an economic student. But deep down, I knew I was interested in medicine too. So when the college, letters, when the college acceptance letters came in, I was fortunate to have some great options across the US. And I was so glad I had been accepted at the University of Miami, which I knew was the best university in the state of Florida, and had both the high level economics and pre-med academics I was looking for. And frankly, I had never seen snow at the time, and I was definitely trying to avoid that meetup. <laughs> so I came here. During my first week here, I was reading the campus newspaper, and there was an article about something called the Da Vinci Program in the College of Arts and Sciences. It was all about interdisciplinary studies and the intersection of social sciences and traditional sciences, and it was on its first year. I thought, wow, this is exactly what I'm looking for. It's like it was made for me. There was only one problem. It was an invite-only program, and I wasn't invited. <laughs> so 
I emailed the program coordinator, Dr. Stampino, um, should be on the next slide, but uh, the program coordinator, Dr. Stampino, to see if I could meet with her. I was nervous to talk to her. I mean, she is the vice dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, but I really believed I was the exact fit for this program. Thankfully, she agreed with me. I couldn't believe that this idea had worked, and I kind of argued myself into this program. It was an amazing lesson in how much more you can experience in life if you show interest or make the effort to open a new door. And I believe that that's especially true at a place that offers as many opportunities academically and personally as the University of Miami. Through the Da Vinci program, I gained the best advisor in the world. Dr. Stampino understood me and what I wanted to do. I got to be in conversations with my fellow Da Vinci scholars that illustrated how interconnected the world really is. For example, an anthropology class I took with Dr. Pamela Geller showed me how a topic such as race should be approached from both social and biological perspectives, and that they complement each other when trying to analyze such a complex topic, and that the concept itself has no biological basis. Assisting Dr. Julia Dahlman in her lab showed me how scientific contributions can be achieved by integrating theories from different disciplines. And those are just a few examples of how interdisciplinary studies can generate important new perspectives when dealing with complex issues. The Da Vinci program was definitely a catalyst for helping me choose what I wanted to study here. I ended up pursuing economics and added a biology major. I chose minors in chemistry and health sector management and policy. And I decided to fulfill the pre-med requirements so I could apply to medical school. In the end, I ended up following my father's footsteps in my academic work here, examining the intersection of medicine and entrepreneurship. I also continue to play soccer and am the president of the men's soccer club team here at the U, which gives me a chance to build relationships with people who share an interest in soccer, but who I wouldn't normally see in my classes. I have also continued to love Brazil and my home while deepening my appreciation for the opportunity America offers. So almost unconsciously, I have been living at a series of intersections. And through these seemingly unconnected influences, these interests have led me further than I would have gone if I had chosen just one path or the other. Sometimes the least obvious combinations are the most powerful. More and more I realize that in the real world, economics is not separate from biology. Life is a product of these things combined. And my hope is that by combining them in my academics and my personal life, I can prepare myself to pursue solutions. I hope to use the education I have received at UM to improve how healthcare is delivered in America, Brazil, and hopefully beyond. Now, I was thinking about saying this out loud as I prepared this talk, and I realized how these aspirations could sound naive or too ambitious. Maybe we'll never solve these problems. But taking on both challenges is definitely a Keynes thing. It's the essence of the culture and history of this place. Whether in athletics, academics, or medicine, what I've learned here is that Keynes often go for what seems unreachable. And if no one takes on these challenges, then solutions will never be found. I really believe if there's one thing I've learned in my life so far, it is the power of intersections. The power that living between two worlds has to shape you and also the potential it has to generate solutions. If there are ways to solve these problems, I believe they will be found at the intersections. So embrace the intersections life places before you. Don't feel you have to choose one path or one perspective. If you're like me, it will make all the difference. And someday the world may thank us for it. Thank you.